is the real thing. Do you experience answered prayers in your life? Uh, the things that you pray about, do you, do you see the change? Do you see things changing? Do you see people changing? Do you see God working uh, in those things that you pray for? And our scripture today would be, will be from 1 John 3 uh, verse 19 up until verse 22. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before Him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and He knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And in verse 22, And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. So we've looked in the last two weeks at test number one, uh, do we confess our sins as Christians? And last week we looked at uh, loving one another and serving one another. And I hope this past week that you put that into practice. I hope there where you went, uh, there we work, there we love people that you get to do with, that you put that into practice uh, by loving them, not out of obligation, but because of that is what Jesus commands uh, from us. And like I've said previously, today we will look at test number three, answered prayers. And definition of prayer, according to the dictionary, is the following. It is addressing God directly, having communication with God. So this is what prayer is all about. Having communication with God. This may include petitions, plea, supplication, thanksgiving, praise, hymns, and lament. So we see we've got a few categories under what uh, prayer falls under, but primarily prayer is communication with God. I speak to God through prayer, and God speaks to me through His written word. This is how I communicate with God, and He communicates uh, back to me. I don't sit and wait until I hear an answer or a voice from heaven talking to me, because God has already spoken uh, to me, as the book of Hebrews also teaches, that He has spoken to us in the last days through His Son, Jesus Christ. So. Uh, the question I want to ask for all of us today, including myself, is do you experience answered prayer in your life? Have you experienced this uh, before? And if you did experience this, did you praise God for the times that He came through for you in those situations? Yes. When you do pray, not if you pray, because we are commanded to pray, so when you pray, uh, what does your prayer requests look like? Uh, 
Is it about your will or is it about God's will? Just a little bit of examination for ourselves this morning when we pray. Do I pray God's will or do I pray my will? To be quite honest, we can sometimes be very selfish. The prayers can quickly be directed to me, 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 I, 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 I. You, you see, uh, in school, the kids have this thing. They say the whole time, me, 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 I, I, I. You see, it's all about me. And sometimes we are like that. I'm going to confess this morning. We are like that sometimes. Uh, God, please do this for me. If you do this, uh, come through here. God knows best. Best for us is to uh, trust Him and to leave the rest up to Him. So our prayer should be directed uh, to God's will. Like I said, is it our will or is it God's will? And we find God's will in the written scriptures, like I always say. I don't need to go anywhere or consult anyone to tell me what God's will for my life is. I just plainly need to open my Bible and read. And if you read out loud, God is speaking to you. You can just read out your Bible audibly and it's God speaking to you through His Word. So, Scripture also says that uh, God does not listen to the prayers of the wicked. So, Scripture says that those that are wicked and unrighteous, God does not listen to their prayers. And we find this in Proverbs 15, verse 29. And it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but He hears the prayer of the righteous. Psalm 66 verse 18 also says, If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So we see that we need to be righteous before God before He can hear our prayers or answer our prayers. And we know from our own self we cannot be righteous. We are only made righteous through Christ. So if you are a Christian, you are made righteous, which means when you pray, God will answer your prayers because you are righteous. But you also need to live righteously. It's easy to say I'm righteous, but the things that I do do not line up with what I say or what I uh, believe in. And here we see God is attentive to the prayers of those who live their lives according to His ways. If we proclaim we are Christians, we need to live like we are Christian. Then He will answer our prayers. But we'll, we'll have a look a little bit later, just to keep it in mind. Uh, God doesn't always answer all our prayers. If I'm going to ask for a Ferrari, or a super bike, or a jet plane, He's not going to give me those things. Because that will only be desired. God, I don't need those things. I have the subway, I have the, the bus system here to get where I want to be. Just, just to give you an example, uh, He doesn't always uh, answer our prayers because I think most of the time when that doesn't happen, it is because our prayers are selfish and it's for desires and not for needs. But today's sermon is basically about experiencing answered Prayers. We can go in another direction here as well today, but I'm not going to go there. It's basically just being, uh, getting answered prayer from God, showing that you are a Christian. So this whole passage uh, is from John 1 John 3, 11 to 24. I'm just going to give you just a quick background of what the passage is about. So this passage is about for those that are born again, born from above, love is an essential trait. We looked at that last week. A Christian needs to love. Our love isn't always perfect, but our love needs to be there. We need to have love in our heart. So when God imparts a new nature uh, that exhibits both holiness and love as habitual characteristics, so practicing love is a proof of the new birth. And those who do not show love have not been born again. So this is the context of this passage. So if you love, if you are born from above, 
And if you pray according to God's will, He will answer your prayers. But when our prayers are directed to selfish desires, and if I'm unsaved, God doesn't hear my prayer. God does not listen to my prayer. So we see here in verse 19, and it says, By this we shall know that we are of the true, and reassure our heart be for him. So this word by this we shall know means a lifestyle of love in action is the demonstrable proof of salvation. We see that in verse 16. If you have your Bibles open there in, in 1 John 3 verse 16, it says the following, by this we know love that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. So if you are a Christian, this kind of builds on last week's sermon, a little bit of this passage. If you're born from God, you will have love as a trait. It will be seen in your life. It will be seen in the works that you do. So like I've said last week, love is an action in the life of a Christian. And this is a true mark of salvation. So love and prayer go basically they go hand in hand, or basically answered prayer accompanies uh, a love, a life of love. Verse twenty says, "For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and He knows everything." There are many times in our life when we we kind of we doubt a little. We doubt a little if I'm, if I'm really, really saved. You know, our heart can quickly condemn us. But Romans 8 verse 1 says the following, that those who are in Christ, there is no condemnation for them. So those that are in God, if you are a Christian today here, you are in God. If you have been born again from above, you are from God. So those in God have confidence that God doesn't condemn you. God does not condemn you. So displaying love proves that believers stand uncondemned before God. So your lifestyle of love, your actions of love, demonstrate that you stand uncondemned before God. Because Romans 5, 8 says, that we looked last week, the Holy Spirit pours out His love in our heart. So this will be a, a trait of your life. Verse 21 says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. So love's manifestation in deeds eliminates self-condemnation and results in confidence about one's relationship with God. So we see here in, in verse 21 that when we live a life of love and we treat people with love and love is in our heart, uh, it eliminates self-condemnation. We are not living for ourselves anymore, but we are living for those around us. So this is just the verses leading up to, to verse 22. And then in verse 22, it says, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. So we have a command here, uh, two commands in this passage. And the one is if we follow what Jesus said in Scripture, what we have in our hands, and we do what God pleases, He answers our prayers. But like I've said a few moments ago, uh, what kind of prayers does He answer? Does He answer the prayers that we need? Or does He answer the prayers that's for my own greed? And we're going to work through it. And yet in verse 22, submission to God through love is evidenced by answered prayers. Submission to God through love is evidenced by answered prayer. And we find this in 1 John 5, verse 13. And it says the following. 1 John 5, 
verse 13. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward Him, that if we ask anything, and here's, here is the, the key, if we ask anything according to His will, so if you pray anything according to God's will, He answers you. If you're going to pray to win the lotto, He's not going to answer you. If you pray for finding a hidden treasure on a secluded beach with bars of gold that can keep you up until eternity, He's not going to give you the map to that treasure. So if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us and if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him and so many times these passages of, of asking god for things can be taken out of context uh, people pray some selfish prayers and then when prayers don't get answered they have doubt they doubt, why didn't God answer my prayer? Uh, do I lack faith? And that's another part of prayer that we can also go into, which we will not go into today. Uh, basically today is just to see if you have experienced answered prayer in your life as a Christian. So here we have the test. God answers prayers that are asked according to His will and purposes. God answers those prayers according to His will and purposes. And we find this John 14 verse 13. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So believers should pray for God's purposes and kingdom and not for our selfish reasons. Our prayer should be based on God's merit and pursue His glory alone. And we find this in Matthew, I'm not going to read it, Matthew 16 verse 26 to 28 and Matthew 6, 9 to verse 10. And this is the thing, and especially this verse, uh, many people believe that if I pray in the name of Jesus, I can pray this long prayer, and at the end, I just say in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to get it. No, it doesn't work like that. The name of Jesus is not a magical formula to get what you want. It doesn't work like that. Jesus is not a genie that I rub three or six times a day to get what I want. So to pray in the name of Jesus is not a formula to get what I want. But when I pray according to God's will and His purposes, and I end my prayer in the name of Jesus, He will do it because it's according to His will and His plan so that He can see the glory and honor Amen. and not me. Amen. John 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, Amen. and it will be done for you. Another verse that is sometimes taken out of context. When believers obey the Lord's commandments and are devoted to His will, their prayers are fruitful, displaying God's glory as He answers them. John 14, 13, 14 that I've just read. Uh, same passage, John 14, uh, verse 21 and verse 23. You'll find evidence of prayers, prayer according to God's will and purposes, which He answered. So when we pray according, according to God's will and purposes found in Scripture, He provides everything else we need in our lives. That is why it's always important to put God's kingdom first. Matthew 6 verse 33, 
And then God will add all the other things that you need in your life. And we find this, Matthew 6, uh, from verse 31. Therefore, do not be anxious. Oh, and we can get anxious so quickly. We are so weak, the human race. We can get anxious very, very quickly. And here scripture teaches, Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Verse 32. Everything you need, God already knows what you need. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Amen. We pray in God's will, God's purposes. God will add the rest to our life that we need. Verse 34. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we see here in Scripture... God answers our prayers if we pray according to His will. And when we seek His kingdom first, He adds the other things for us. And there's nothing wrong to pray uh, God to help you in a situation or help you with a test or, or help you with a job interview. Those things, there's nothing wrong praying those things. But when we seek God's kingdom, when we pursue His kingdom, he will add all the other things to our life which we need. And Jesus is the best example of a man that prayed God's will. When you look in the Gospels, whenever Jesus prayed, God answered his prayers. Because it was always directed to God's will and purposes. It was never directed to him, but it was always directed to God. We have other examples in Scripture as well. We have uh, Elijah praying, and God answered his prayer. 2 Kings uh, 1 verse 12, God sent fire from heaven. We have Hezekiah, 2 Kings 19 verse 19, uh, where he prayed for deliverance. And we also have the apostles that prayed for boldness in Acts 4 verse 29, and God answered these prayers. And when you look in the context of these answered prayers, these were men that lived righteously, but the prayers was to show God's glory and honor. It was not for selfish deeds. It was to show glory to God, not to the man itself. So God answers the prayers of those that are saved. So if you are a Christian today and if you have experienced answered prayer in your life, you are righteous because you are in Christ. It shows that you are a Christian. We see that Jesus' prayers were answered by God. First of all, because He kept God's commandments. Yes, Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. But while He was on earth, He focused solely on the power of the Holy Spirit. He laid down His divinely attributes why he was on earth. So he still followed in God's footsteps. He did nothing from, from, from himself or out of the plan or will of God. He prayed for the will of God and the kingdom of God above all things. And when you look at the life of Jesus, this was a pattern for his life. And this should also be a pattern for us as Christians today. To pray God's kingdom, to pray God's will. Like I've said, if you have experienced answered prayers, and I hope you have, I hope you have experienced answered prayer in your life, be sure that you are saved. We, we look at scripture, God has not listened to wicked people or unrighteous people, but to the righteous, He listens. He listens to us. This shows that you are walking in God's commandments 
and praying his kingdom come and his will be done before your own desires. So if you have experienced answered prayer, you are a child of God Amen. because he listens to you. Amen. If you pray according to God's will and purposes, he will answer your prayer. He will listen to you. And these following points, um, they are for all of us this morning, praying the God of will, praying God's will in our life. And it's just for every one of us, myself, first and foremost, have you prayed for an unbeliever and seen that he has come to Christ? Have you ever prayed for an unbeliever uh, to come to Christ? Have you prayed for someone in distress and see God turn their uh, agony and pain into joy? Is there someone that you've prayed, prayed for that going through a rough time? And you've seen God turn that pain and suffering into joy. Have you sought God to fill maybe an empty space uh, in your life? There's something in your life that there's an empty space in your life which only God can fill. Have you asked Him to fill that void in your life? Have you prayed for the forgiveness of your sins and received it? If you have, if you are a Christian today, have you presented His truth and experienced His grace? Have you shared His truth to people? Have you experienced His grace? Have you prayed for power in proclaiming the gospel and experienced it? Is that one of your prayers? Say, God, please help me to, to share the gospel with people, but also to, to see you work in their lives. Have you found contentment in tough times? Have you prayed for contentment in tough times? Saying, God, you know the situation where I'm in, it's, it's difficult. But while I'm in this, make me content. Make me to, to still serve you, love you, be there for other people. Help me to look outwardly. And in your time and in your will, I trust that you will deliver me from, from this. Have you prayed for greater intimacy with God? And have you experienced it? So if you have prayed these prayers in your life, because all of these prayers are directed to God and His will, it indicates that you belong to Him and He to you. So if you have ever prayed these prayers, it shows that your heart's directed to God. It shows that you are putting His kingdom and His will before your own. And if not, I pray this morning that this will be the things that we pray about. Pray for His gospel to change sinners. Pray for Him to help us in tough times, to give us the strength and the power to go on, to be content. It's not always easy. But with the power of the Holy Spirit in us, it is, we can do it. Yes. We can do it. Yes. God answers the prayers of the righteous. And if you are a Savior today, and I believe you are, because you are here in church today, He answers your prayers. If you are a Christian, He will answer your prayer. And this is test number three today. God answers your prayers if you are Say, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you today, Lord, that we have this, this amazing privilege, Lord, of, of coming to you in prayer, God, where we can have communion with you, Lord, and communication with you, Lord. I pray today, Heavenly Father, that our prayers, when we pray, God, not if we pray, will be directed to your glory, to your kingdom, and to your will, Heavenly Father. As you say in Scripture, Lord, that you will have all the other things that we need in our lives, Heavenly Father. I pray today that that prayer will be a pattern of our lives. That we will not neglect prayer in our lives, Lord. As we know that you can do more in a second, Heavenly Father, 
that we can ever do in this lifetime on earth, Lord. I pray today, Heavenly Father, that you will make us attentive, Lord, to spend time with you in prayer, Lord. That we will seek you, Lord. That we will bring our lamentations and our pleas and our supplications to you and put it at your feet, Heavenly Father. You said that we should not be anxious about tomorrow. And we trust you with our lives and with our futures here this morning, God. Help us, Lord, to live a life worthy and honor to you, Lord. That we will reflect Christ to this dark and broken world, Heavenly Father. I also pray today, Lord, for our brothers and sisters in Christ here this morning, Lord, that are going through tough times, Heavenly Father, that are facing tough situations, Lord. First of all, Lord, show us, God, what you want us to learn from this, Lord. While we are in this tunnel, God, show us, Lord, why you chisel at us, why you conform us into the image of Christ. While you are busy, Lord, show us, Heavenly Father. Teach us, Lord, through this, God. But in this, Heavenly Father, I pray that you will turn the pain into joy, Lord, in your time and in your plan, Heavenly Father. We trust you, God. And thank you, Lord, that we can open your Holy Scriptures this morning, Lord. Thank you that you, we know that you speak to us, Lord, through the avenues of your written text, Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord, to never let go of your word and prayer, God, that this will be our guiding stone in our lives, Lord. I pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen.